In last tutorial, we cleaned up our data frame and made it ready for model building. In this tutorial, we are going to build a machine learning model and then use k-fold cross validation and grid search CV to come up with the best algorithm as well as the best parameters. Here in this data frame, we have a location and as you all know that machine learning model cannot interpret tax data. This one is a tax column. So we have to convert this into a numeric column and one of the ways of converting tax column which is a categorical information into numerical information is to use one hot encoding it is also called dummies so we are going to use pandas dummies method here uh, and the way you do that is you take your data frame and the column that you want to hot encode and then call pd dot get dummies function on it when you run it what it will do is for each of the locations it will create a new column so for example first few locations are first block jayanagar for that it created a new column and set the value to one and remaining all the values are zero when you have a location as first face jp nagar the value see here the value is one and remaining values are zero so it is a pretty straightforward encoding method if you want to know more about this i have a separate video just to cover one hot encoding now let's say you have these dummy columns here and i'm going to store them into a separate data frame so it looks something like this and then i will append that into my main data frame so i will create a new data frame called df11 and i will concatenate df10 and these dummies okay so df10 so the way you do that is df dot concat okay i want to concat two data frames df1 and df2 on columns all right now which are the two data frames that i want to concat one is df10 the second one is dummies all right now we learned in our other one hot encoding tutorial that to avoid a dummy variable trap you should have one less dummies column let's say if we drop first block jayanagar column then to represent this column we can use zeros in all other columns and that will means it's first block jayanagar so we can live with one less column and for that reason i'm going to drop the last column here and the last column is other so this is the column i'm going to drop And now my data frame looks something like this. So it has our necessary uh, features such as total square foot, bath, price, etc. And then all the location columns are dummy encoded. Okay, so they are represented as a numbers. So of course now I can drop this location column because I have already covered that column in to those dummies columns. So here I will just drop that column and create a new data frame call it df12 wow we are already at number 12. so this shows how how long our data processing pipeline has become this is like a pipeline you know df1 is one stage df2 is third to second stage and df12 is probably the 12th stage we are now all set to start building our model first let me examine the uh, shape of the data frame so we still have 7000 rows 245 columns i will create an x variable because x variable should contain only independent variables okay my dependent variable is price so i need to have price dropped from my data frame so i will say drop the price on x is equal to columns which means drop the price column and that will give me my X, which I need for my model training. Okay, so X is all independent variables, total square foot bath, BHK, and remaining all the columns are representing the location. And Y is DF12.price. 
okay and when you do y dot head all right so my x and y are ready now you all know from my other train to split tutorial that uh, we always divide our data set into training and test data set then we use training data set for the model training and to evaluate the model performance we use the test data set okay so we are going to import train test split method from sklearn model selection and my test size is 0.2 which means i want 20 percent of my samples to be test samples and remaining 80 percent i'm going to use for model training now here what i have done is i've created a linear regression model i i have a separate tutorial on linear regression so if you want to look into the math behind it you can follow that tutorial for this tutorial we're just going to call fit method on x train and y train and once the model is trained which is in this tab the next step is to evaluate the score of our model which will tell you uh, how good our model is when you execute this it will it will do the training on x train and y train and then it is giving me the score so the score is 84 percent which is pretty decent Typically, a data scientist would try a couple of models with a couple of different parameters to come up with the best optimal model, okay? So that's what we are going to do. We are going to first use a k-fold cross-validation. Again, for k-fold cross-validation, I have a separate tutorial. So if you have any curiosity in knowing the details, you can go and watch that tutorial, okay? So here I have imported some impo um, needed methods. And then I'm creating a shuffle split for my cross validation. Shuffle split will randomize my samples so that each of the fold have equal distribution of my, you know, data samples. So it's not just targeted into one area. Okay. And when I use cross validation, I'm getting these scores. So you can see I'm kind of getting more than 80% score all the time. I mean, here I got 77%, but majority of the time I am getting more than 80%, okay? I don't want to go into detail of how Crosswell score works because that's a big topic. And if you don't know about that, I recommend that you watch my K-fold cross-validation tutorial. Now, next step is we figured that for linear regression, even if you run five-fold cross-validation, we are getting score more than 80%. But how about trying few other uh, regression techniques? Okay, there are like lasso regression, there is decision tree regression, there are various regression algorithms available. So as a data scientist, I want to try those different algorithms and figure out which one gives me the best score. For that, we use a method called grid search CV. For grid search CV also, I have a separate tutorial and I'm going to link that tutorial in this video at top right corner as well as in video description. That's a very good API that sklearn provides which can run your model on different regressors and different parameters and it can tell you the base score. Let's import grid search cv other than linear regression of course i want to try lasso and decision tree regression for grid search cv i'm going to write a function so this is how function is going to look like so i will say okay find my best model using grid search cv i will supply x and y as an input and this should tell me which algorithm is the best okay now in this configuration i have specified the algorithm as well as the parameters so grid search cv will not only do the best algorithm selection for that particular algorithm it will also tell you the best parameter this is called hyperparameter tuning to save some time of course i am just copying and pasting the code uh, so scores I'm going to st store in this course list. I have this cross validation shuffle split, which will 
just randomly shuffle my sample so that I can get more better result. And then what I'm doing is I'm going through this Python dictionary. This is just a dictionary. I'm just going through that and initializing grid search CV object with this model as well as these parameters. Okay, this is the parameter grid that it will use. For cross validation, of course, I'm using this CV object with five fold cross validation. And then I will call a fit method. Once this method is called, I will append the scores into the scores list. Okay, and this GS dot base score and base parameters will tell me the best parameters and base score for that particular run. Okay, and then I will return the resultant um, scores into a data frame. All right. So once I have this method defined, I can call the method on my X and Y. I paused my video cause the training might take some time depending upon your computer. But after running the training for some time, it came up with the best score. So here you can see that the winner is linear regression. It has the maximum score. You see Lasso has 68%, Decision Tree has 72%. And for linear regression, these are the best parameters, which is normalized false. So I can conclude that my linear regression model is the best one. So whatever LRCLF classifier I have created here, I will just use that. And it is already trained with 84% score. So I'm just going to uh, use that to make property price prediction for a couple of samples just to kind of test it out. And for that, I will write a predict price function. Okay, so let me write that function so the predict price function takes location square foot bath and bhk as an input and it will return you the price estimated price now in your x uh, array uh, the zeroth column the first column is square foot the second one is bath third one is bhk and for location you know we have some 240 location columns so for location i am locating the appropriate column. So let me just show you, for example, uh, if you do X dot columns, you find all of these columns, okay? If I want to know the location of the second phase judicial layout, then I can simply do this uh, here. I can say my location is second phase judicial layout. And when you run it, it gives you the column index as five. You can see that this is zero, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So that's how this method works internally. And once you have location index, you can set that particular index value to be one here. And that's exactly what I'm doing. And by doing this, this will give you the predicted price. So let's execute this. And now let's make a price prediction for first phase JP Nagar, where the property square foot area is 1000 square foot is two bedroom and two bathroom apartment. So you get 83 lakh rupees as an estimated price. And if the same thing is, let's say three bedroom, three bath. then you get 86 lakh, which kind of makes sense, you know. Let's look at some other location, some uh, high price location. We know Indra Nagar in Bangalore is a little costly. So when you run this, you get, so in first phase JP Nagar, the price would be 83 lakh versus Indra Nagar is one crore, 81 lakh rupees. And the same home for three bedroom, three bath is 184 lakh. Now one observation you will make here is, so second column, third column is bath, the fourth one is BHK. So let's say for the same bath and if I have more BHK and if I run this, I'm getting little less price. You see 83 versus 81. You would think that the price should be higher if my BHK goes higher, okay? 
but that's not what our data is telling us. If you look at our data, um, we have many samples where for a given location, three bedroom apartments for same like square foot area, they cost less uh, compared to two bedroom apartment. Now there could be different reasons. Like sometimes if you're a thousand square foot home and two bedroom apartment, then the two bed each, the size of each bedroom will be big enough. Versus if you have three bedroom, you get, you're getting three bedrooms, but uh, each of the bedrooms are very small and compact. So someone might not like that. That's one reason. Other reason is because of our data is distributed. Sometimes we don't have enough information on why three bedroom apartments would cost uh, less compared to two. For example, check this. Here in Rajajinagar, I have two bedroom and three bedroom apartment. The the square foot is little higher, but look at the price. Price of two bedroom apartment is 42 lakh more than this one. And if you observe our data properly, you will find many such example. And that's the reason why the model is giving this behavior. All right, now it is the time to export the model to a pickle file. At the start of this tutorial series, we said that we will export this model to a pickle file and then it will be used by our Python Flask server. So now that our model building procedure is done, we are exporting all the artifacts which are need needed by our Python Flask server to uh, different files, okay? So as a data scientist, you worked with your business manager, you went through various iterations, you tried different models, grid search, CVK, full cross validation, you cleaned your data, you removed outliers, and you came up with this awesome model which is ready to be used in production. In real life, people also use A-B testing just to test uh, previous model versus this new model, but we are not going to cover A-B testing, etc. We will just look into how to export this model and then use it on our website. For exporting the model, also I have a separate tutorial, uh, but it is very simple code actually. Um, what you do is you import a pickle file and then you uh, just say pickle.dump on and then you, you pass your model, your classifier as an argument. And when you execute this, it will export this file. When I open my directory, I see that I have this file. You see, this is the model that it, it got exported. The size is 5 KB. You would think like why the size is so small? Because this linear regression model is just storing the coefficients and intercept and all those parameters. It doesn't have your actual data, okay? That's why the file size is very small. Uh, other than the model, we also need uh, the columns information. For example, here in my predict price function, I had this x dot columns. These columns, the way they are structured and they're indexed into the list is important uh, for making a predict prediction. So I will export that information into a JSON file and I have imported JSON and then all those columns I'm converted, converting into lowercase because you know, like there are like upper and lowercase combinations. So it's better if everything is in the lowercase and then I am dumping all of them into a JSON file. Here is my JSON file. If I add it with notepad, uh, it looks something like this. So it, it has all the columns, okay? So this JSON file and this pickle model are going to be used in my Python Flask server. So this is all I have for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we are going to build Python Flask server, which will use these two artifacts. Thank you for watching. I will see you in next tutorial.